Since ancient times, debates have raged regarding the Earth's rotation and the implications it has. The simple daily cycle of the sun in the sky suggested to many ancient philosophers that our celestial body rotates, but what exactly did that imply for everything on that rotating body? Galileo was one of the first to tackle such a question, suggesting that projectiles fired into the air persist in their horizontal rotational movement and continue to rotate while in the air. As time went on though, more and more scientists began to question if it was a little more complex than that. In 1668, Italian physiologist and mathematician Giovanni Borelli applied the principle of inertia to an object falling from the top of a tower to the ground. He proposed that both the top of the tower and the bottom of the tower are parts of their own rotational circle with their own circumference determined by their radius from the center of the earth. The top of the tower is part of a larger circle than that of the circle at the ground. So if both circles have the same rotational velocity determined by Earth's rotation, then the top of the tower will have a larger linear velocity. This means that as it falls, it will move toward the smaller circle or the circle with less linear velocity and therefore would surpass the area in which it would land if the two linear velocities were the same. Since Earth spins counterclockwise, this would suggest that the object would land slightly eastward of the bottom of the tower. An experiment to test such a theory, though, was not practical, for far too many other factors, such as the wind, would affect the dropping object before this theoretical effect would. Borelli instead calculated the degree to which this change in position occurs and proposed that a tower with a height of 71 meters would come with a ground displacement of about 2 centimeters east of where it would otherwise land. Although many scientists of the time would propose theories of their own on this matter, and although debate would continue to rage on, no significant progress would be made for over a century until 1803, when French polymath Pierre-Simon Laplace would derive an equation that represents the eastward deflection of falling objects. To derive this equation, Laplace also had to derive equations of motion that included the effects of Earth's rotation. In his Treatise of Celestial Mechanics, he proposed four distinct terms that represent a deflecting force due to a counterclockwise rotation of an Earth fully covered in an ocean. An eastward velocity induces a southern force and an outward force. A northward velocity induces an eastward force. And an outward velocity induces a westward force. More generally, Laplace proposed that an object with a velocity induces a force perpendicular to its motion. He also pointed out that in the southern hemisphere, phi becomes negative, resulting in southward magnitude becoming northward and eastward magnitude becoming westward. Finally, Laplace notes that the ocean is a thin shell compared to Earth's entire radius, and therefore there are no large-scale velocities or accelerations in the outward direction because there is simply not much space to work with. Therefore, forces 2 and 4 are negligible, and only forces 1 and 3 are important. French engineer and mathematician Gaspard Gustave de Coriolis would publish work with similar results later in 1835. Coriolis brought a more physical interpretation to the study as he showed how this pseudo-force applies to industrial equipment such as water wheels. Laplace's work, however, preceded that of Coriolis by four decades and also concerned the rotation of the Earth rather than rotating industrial equipment. Most future papers building on the Coriolis effect mention Laplace's work rather than that of Coriolis as well. However, even Laplace's work was with that of an Earth covered in an ocean and made no mention of an atmosphere. The first scientist to merge the equations put forth by Laplace with the atmosphere was American meteorologist William Farrell in 1856. Farrell took Laplace's terms 1 and 3 and applied them to particles of air moving in Earth's atmosphere. He then merged the Coriolis effect with the then-known meridional flows of the atmosphere, which are the northward and southward flows of air associated with the poleward transfer of hot air and the equatorward transfer of cold air. In merging the two ideas, Farrell created the first ever diagram representing the general flow of air on Earth, a diagram that is still in use to this very day. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.